Hello, you're welcome back. All right, so now we'll continue from where we stop. We are still dis discussing our uh, resultant of two vectors, okay? And we've already looked at um, three case scenario. So now we are looking at another case scenario where the two vectors are inclined at an angle. Now this angle is not actually perpendicular, okay? Of course, uh, it's a perpendicular angle of, or angle 90. So I'm looking at either an acute angle between the two vectors or even an obtuse angle so anything any angle that is other than 90 degrees so that's what i'm looking at so how do we find resultant of two vectors when they are inclined at an angle okay so let's see how that works all right so now when you have these two vectors f1 and f2 inclined at an angle for us to be able to evaluate the resultant okay uh, we are going to actually need the help of of, of a, a law okay and that law we need the help is going to be it's called the parallelogram law of vectors okay parallelogram law of vectors okay so what does it state Okay, because I need to get this resultant. It said that if two vectors incline at an angle, okay, it's represented in direction and in magnitude by the adjacent side of a parallelogram. So I have to redraw this again. Okay, let's I represent these two. If these two vectors, all right, uh, let's vector f1 and vector f2. So if this if two vectors incline at an angle to each other okay is represented in direction and magnitude if i represent these two vectors in direct two vectors in direction and magnitude by the adjacent side of adjacent side of a parallelogram that means from here now i can actually construct let me use a different color construct a parallelogram so i'm using a parallel line to represent f2 okay i take it all right then i'm gonna use uh another parallel line to represent okay f1 so if i can represent them by the adjacent side of a parallelogram okay so f1 is represented by this so this is also f1 f2 okay so let me continue if two vectors incline at an angle okay is represented in direction and the magnitude by the adjacent side of a parallelogram all right then the resultant of the two vectors can be represented in direction and the magnitude by the diagonal of the parallelogram drawn from their point of intersection so if i want to get the resultant of f1 f2 all i just need is to draw a diagonal so the diagonal of this parallelogram that becomes the resultant okay becomes the resultant so this is my resultant so how do I actually, which formula now actually use this resultant? Let's see how the formula that you that resultant. Okay. Now, first of all, this angle here is angle between the two vector theta. And this theta, if I bring it up here, it is also what I have here. So this is also going to be theta. Because these two lines, F1, F2, they are parallel. Okay. This line here is parallel. So we call this corresponding angle any angle in front of uh, parallel lines okay two parallel lines are equal so if this is theta this is also going to be theta and you know this is a straight line right this line f2 is a straight line and uh, the one in front is theta then of course if you want to get got the whole of this is a straight line and the angle in the straight line is what is 180 the angle total angle in the straight line is 180 all right so this now bring me to the point where I want to get I want to get the angle inside the the parallelogram okay so that's gonna be 180 minus theta 180 please follow me 180 minus theta so that is the angle that's inside the parallel inside the parallelogram and of course that angle is directly opposite opposite to the resultant 
okay so how does that actually help me let me tell you how that helped me okay i will take out the this track the uh the resultant this line of the resultant i'm gonna take out the f f2 i'm gonna take it out okay then of course f1 that's actually parallel to this i'm gonna just take half of this what i'm i'm, I'm taking just half of this uh, parallelogram okay and of course if you take if you divide the parallelogram into two half you're gonna have two triangles so this is gonna be resultant f2 f1 and of course the angle opposite r is already i've done that that is 180 minus theta okay so from this triangle now i cannot get my resultant which rule actually helps me to get my resultant that's what is called cosine rule remember cosine rule okay this is cosine we basically use cosine rule when the triangle that we are considering is not a right angle triangle we use particular theory when we are dealing with the right angle triangle but in when we are having a, a, a non right angle triangle okay if you want to get any side we use cosine rule so what is cosine rule okay now the cosine rule of this right angle triangle state that um r square of course is going to be equal to um the square of r is going to be equal to the square of f f1 square right plus f2 square uh, for this is Pythagoras theorem okay so cosine rule is actually uh, an extension of Pythagoras theorem in fact Pythagoras theorem comes from cosine rule okay then i'll add something to it two times f1 f2 then cos of the angle that is opposite to the resultant the angle opposite the resultant is 180 minus theta so that is 180 minus theta so this is how i can actually so that way now if i want to get the resultant now i can now find the square root of everything at the right hand side of the equation so the resultant of that is going to be f1 square plus f2 square minus 2 times f1 f2 cos 80 minus theta so that is going to be the magnitude of the this formula is for is for the magnitude of the resultant what of the direction okay remember the 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 resultant should also have a direction let me call that direction alpha for me to be able to get this direction alpha okay the angle that this resultant makes with f2 i'm going to use sine rule okay i use cosine rule to find the resultant for for me to find the the direction of the resultant i use sine rule so what is sine rule saying okay in sine rule we have the resultant if i've already evaluated it divided by the sine of the angle opposite to the resultant that's 180 minus theta of course that's an unknown after i can use that after i must have evaluated the resultant okay so now for me to get this angle alpha which of course is the the angle of the resultant okay then i'm gonna take f1 divided by the angle opposite to f1 that is sine alpha so for this equation now if i could actually rearrange this equation i can get the alpha because the alpha is the direction i'm looking at okay i think um, example will do us good example will do us good let's look at this two forces okay uh let's see how okay let me just write it in word what is the resultant of two forces f1 20 newton and f2 uh 30 newton okay incline at an angle of 
60 degrees to each other. So we are looking for the resultant in direction of the magnitude. Okay, so solution. The resultant is going to be equal to the force F1, F2. Okay, F1 is 20 square plus F2, which is 30 square minus 2 times 20 times 30. Then cos 180 minus theta. The theta is 60 degrees. Okay. All right. So the result of that is going to be called. Why is this 400? This is 900. Two times uh, 20 is 60. Two times 20 is 40. 40 times uh, 30 is 1200. Okay, then cos 180 minus 60, that's 120. So the result of that is going to be equal to the square root of 400 plus uh, 900, that's 1300. If we use your calculator do cos 120, what you have is minus 0 0.5. So of course, remember minus times minus is plus. So I'm going to have plus here. Okay, because what I have is minus 0 0.5 all. Okay, so the 0 0.5 multiplied by 1200. That gives me 600. So everything now should actually yield the square root of 1900. Okay, 1900. So 1900. So, invariably, that resultant is 43 Newton. Okay, uh, the, the direction of the resultant alpha. Okay, I, I believe we can do that just. So, alpha, remember, the formula will have resultant divided by sine of 180 minus theta. Then uh, equal to F1 all over sine alpha. Okay, the result has already been gotten. That's 43. Then divided by sine 180 minus theta. Okay, that's sine 180 minus uh, 60, which is still going to be sine 120. F1 is uh, 20. Then divided by sine alpha. Okay. So let me sign alpha now. If I make sine alpha the subject of formula, I'm gonna have cross multiply that's gonna be 20 times sine 1 120 divided by 43. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, first of all, let's do 120 sine of 120, right? Okay. Then, of course, multiply by 20 divided by 43. That's 0 0.4, 4 0 So I have sine alpha to be equal to 0 0.43, okay? So now the angle now alpha is going to be sine inverse of 0 0.43. Let's do that. Inverse of sine, shift sine, that is 23 degrees. So the resultant will be at an angle of 23 degrees with the uh, force with the vector F2 with the horizontal force, okay? F2. Okay, so that is how 
we actually evaluate that okay we proceed now what we're going to be looking at uh, resolution of vectors okay so already we already know that uh, a vector quantity okay is a quantity that has direction and magnitude sometimes okay if the direction of a vector is such that it is neither in any of the reference axes okay last that means the vector i'm considering is not vertical nor horizontal let's see take for example a force okay that is neither vertical nor horizontal but that force is inclined at an angle theta so such a force can be expressed in two dimensions in two components so this force can can be expressed can be referenced in the horizontal component it can also be referenced in vertical okay i actually did this one with treated projector but i can still do it again or better still so that means uh, this line now becomes the vertical component of this force F. I call it Fy. And the horizontal line now becomes the horizontal component. So that means, okay, if I want to find the, the, let's start with the vertical component. Okay, oh, okay. Since I already started with horizontal. Horizontal component of the force F. Okay, so the horizontal the horizontal component is F S. That's horizontal. That's the adjacent of this uh, right angle triangle, and the force itself is the hypotenuse. So we use cos theta. Cos theta is always equal to adjacent all over hypotenuse. So if I cross multiply, so the horizontal component of a force is going to be equal to that force multiply by cos theta f cos theta for example if you are being given a force if there's there's a force of you have a force of 20 newton and that force happened to incline at an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal and you are being asked to find the horizontal component of that force all you need to do is to multiply that, that force by cos theta and that's going to be 20 cos 60. So that's going to give me 20 times. The cos of 60 is 0 0.5. So in the this same force that's 20 newton, okay? If I consider it in the horizontal direction, it will no longer be 20 newton. It becomes 10 newton. 20 times 0 0.5. Okay. Let's look at a vertical component. Okay, now in vertical component, we're cons looking at what this force will be if I should reference it. If this force now should be actually made to be pointing vert vertically upward, and that component we call it Fy. The force and that's the opposite of this right angle triangle right the force itself is the hypotenuse so we are using sine this time around sine theta is equal to opposite which is fy then divided by hypotenuse which is f so i need to cross multiply so cross multiply and i'm gonna have f sine theta so invariably by example, there is a force, let's say, of 40 Newton, and it happened that that force is inclined at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. And you have been asked what will be that force, what will be the value of that force in the vertical dimension of it, okay? So the vertical component of that force will be 40, then sine 30. Uh, going to be 40 sin 30 is 0 0.5 and that's going to be 20 newton 
okay so that is how we resolve force resolution of force into vertical component and the horizontal component so having know how to resolve force forces remember the resultant we treated previously is the resultant of two just two forces or two vectors okay so what if we have more than more than two vectors how can we find the resultant of more than two vectors okay so that's what i'm going to be doing now looking at the resultant of more than two vectors okay let's do this so what if you have more than two vectors and want to find the result out because what we did was just two vectors how do we do it it's very easy the reason being that no matter the number of vectors of okay number of vectors acting at a, a point okay and of course those vectors for me to find the resultant they must be coherent that means if they, if they are forces they must be acting at the same time right so no matter the number of vectors that we have okay acting at a point all of them either can be resolved as a sum total of vertical okay uh, or horizontal components no matter how many they are okay let's look at typical let's see a uh, typical example I have forces some horizontal some are actually inclined let me just optimize it okay the one acting upward facing upward let me call that that one f1 the one facing downward let me call it f2 the one facing rightward let me call it f3 the one at the leftward direction let me call that f4 then you discover that there's one that is inclined at an angle okay let me call that f5 and definitely that's an i have to i have to study the angle theta so with what i have here now you say how many forces are actually acting at this point and of course let's say this all these forces are from this point origin okay zero so if i ask how many forces are at this point origin o of course there are five forces all right so how do i get the resultant simple if you want to get the resultant of all these forces you have to resolve them okay you have to group all the vertical forces component and group the horizontal component having in mind that if you are dealing with this one that is a at an angle this one will have two components this f5 can be referenced both in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction so what's the formula the formula is simple the formula okay that i can actually use to find this resultant is is going to be the square root of sum of all the forces okay all the horizontal forces horizontal component all square so that's this symbol this is a symbol of summation in mathematics then plus the sum of all the forces acting vertically all square that's all so if i'm able to group the vertical component and the but now if i'm actually adding remember opposite forces are always you have to subtract or better still forces acting in the negative or uh, uh okay x or y as this should always be minus okay for example if i want to get the sum of the of the horizontal force it's easy f3 is positive all right then minus f4 that's negative okay then there's 
this f5 the horizontal component of f5 if i resolve f5 of course it will be acting in the positive because if i resolve it, it will be horizontal and that will be pointing in the positive x direction okay so that's going to be positive so of course remember when i okay how we did the horizontal component of a force so that is going to be f5 i have to multiply cos theta to it f5 cos theta horizontal component of f5 so that's my horizontal component that's the sum of my horizontal component okay what of the sum of my vertical component f of y let's do that f1 is acting in positive okay upward vertically that's positive that's going to be f1 then it happened that f3 is acting downward that's negative that's f2 please pardon me minus f2 okay now f5 also has don't forget if i'm also considering the vertical component f5 has a vertical component all right so if i should resolve f5 it will be acting upward that's positive that's the vertical component of f5 so positive f5 then of course the component vertical component of it I have to multiply sine theta to it to resolve okay i think uh, this will actually make sense if we work an example here we go so i get to okay i have a question here maybe it's tiny that you can see it but i could read it out okay uh, we have to draw it okay better still i can take it i can take it let me take it take it to my board here we go okay okay so it's blurry but i hope you can see it quite well so there are forces i have a figures okay uh forces acting here this one acting upward is three root three okay this is 10 newton i hope you can see that the angle here is 30 degrees this one actually acting left toward is 3 newton there's no force acting uh this one acting right toward please pardon me is 3 newton there's no force acting left toward okay but have an under one that is inclined okay uh that's six, 6 newton here so what's the question in the figure above shows uh four forces 3 newton 10 newton 3 root 3 newton and 5 newton acting on the particle p so this is the the object all of them are acting on this object the resultant of the force is so simple the resultant of the forces by our formula is going to be this square root of the sum of the horizontal forces all squared plus the sum of the vertical forces all squared all right so let's flow let me start evaluating the my horizontal force okay how we go so third newton is positive i tell you there there's no other okay then no one is acting at the negative direction so now remember this inclined forces let me start with uh, the six newton this is newton if i resolve this six this six newton this is newton acting here if i resolve with horizontal the arrow will be pointing in the negative direction okay so let me resolve that so for this is newton i'm gonna have minus six remember how we resolve okay the horizontal component of of a vector that's gonna be cos i was the angle the angle is 60 degrees cos 60 degrees okay now i'm going to resolve another one that's uh, the 10 newton i have here this 10 newton okay this 10 newton if I should resolve this 10 newton, remember it will be pointing po in the positive direction. Okay. Horizontally. So that's going to be plus 10. Okay. Cost of the angle. The angle there is 30 degrees. Cost 30 degrees. Okay. So let's evaluate. This is going to be 3 minus 6. 
I want to use a special angle. Okay, triangle to resolve all this course. Probably I will teach, I will show you how to do that. I can use special angle triangle to find the cost of uh, the ratio, trigonometric ratio of some angles without using calculator. Cos 60 is, is always equal to root 3 all over 2. Okay, I believe they should know that by now. Then have, please pardon me, cos 60 is just half, okay? Cos 60 is just half. 1 over 2. Then 10 times cos 30 is root 3 all over 2. Okay, so let's resolve this. 3 all over 2 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So, of course, 2 divided by 10 here, half 5. So, this is 5 root 3. Horizontal component is 5 root 3. Let's evaluate the vertical component. Starting with the one that's acting upward, okay? That is 3 root 3, acting upward. No one's acting downward. Now I have to resolve the incline forces. Okay, so let's go there. If I should resolve this 6 Newton, of course, it will be acting there, it will be pointing downward. So that will make, that will, okay, makes it a negative. That's going to be negative. Of course, the vertical component of the 6 Newton, that was 6 sine 60. All right. Then if I should resolve the 10 Newton, okay, you know very well that vertically, if I resolve the 10 Newton vertically, the arrow will be pointed upward. Now let's resolve it. So that's going to be plus 10, then the sine of 30. Okay, so let's walk. This 3 root 3, quite well. Minus 6, sine 60 is root 3 all over 2. Then 10 times sine 30 is 1 all over 2. All right, so let's do this. This is going to be 3 root 3. 6 divided by 2, that's 3. Seven, 3 root 3, okay? Then plus 10 all over 2, which gives me 5. 3 root 3 minus 3 root 3, that's 0, okay? That's 0, so I'm left with 5. So my vertical component is 5 newtons. So I cannot get my resultant applying the formula. So resultant, now is going to be equal to the square root of my horizontal component, which was... 5 root 3 okay after square that all squared then plus vertical okay that's 5 square so let's do this if I square 5 here I'm gonna have 25 5 square because square will I'll have to square 5 then I'll square root 3 if I square 5 I have to do 5 if I square root 3, square cancels the square root, I have 3, okay? Or if I square root 3, 3 square is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3, okay? Then I'm having 3 times 5, that, uh, 3 times 25, please pardon me. I better still, let me just do that, so that you know what I just did. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, of course, uh, 5 squared, 25. The square root of 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Of course, here, 5 squared is 25. Let's work on this. 25 times 3, that's 75. Plus 25. So 75 plus 25 is 100. So the square root of 100 is 10 Newton. Ten Newton. Okay, we 
are done so if there are other questions then i will have to do that in the next video all right see you in the next video thank you